The following podcast is a member of the Pokecasters Network. Pokecasters Network, supporting Pokemon content creators, their shows, and the community of Pokemon fans. To find out more, check out pokecastersnetwork.com or find us on Twitter and Facebook. Hello, and welcome to Lucas Lectures, hosted by the big fish himself, veteran Lucas. Sit back, relax, and enjoy today's topic. Hello, everybody, and welcome back to another Lucas Lecture. This is me, Veteran Lucas, coming at you from the Poke Science Podcast. Hope you guys are having a fantastic day or night. Now, for today's episode, I'm, I'm always, I've always wanted to get into this topic because it's something I've always found so interesting. I have a real passion for world building. I love it when authors or creators give people the right to kind of just mess with whatever world they created. And for Pokemon... What I really want to focus on are the lives of people outside of the training sphere. So the games focus on a world of Pokemon, and the way they focus on it is that it's, the world of Pokemon is a playground for anyone who trains Pokemon for fighting. The economy, the culture, the police system, it almost always seems to stem from fighting. But Detective Pikachu, the movie, brought up a fantastic point. There are other jobs and responsibilities that people have, too. It's not that everybody's a trainer. Everybody has to have some kind of job that doesn't involve beating up the local punks and crime lords and doesn't involve invading someone's gym. What jobs do we have in our world that would be altered in the Pokemon world? What jobs would become a whole lot more fun or or interesting without Pokemon what jobs would have barely any impact whatsoever? Now, I do want to say, my favorite job that I've ever seen in the Pokemon world that was not Pokemon training, but still involved using Pokemon for fighting, was when they had the uh, whole Pokemon Legend series, the one where they had the little mini episodes, a few from each generation, the Pokemon SWAT team. If you guys look up the Pokemon SWAT team video, it is one of the coolest things I have ever seen Pokemon do. It was like Rainbow Six Siege mixed with Game Freak, seeing an Arcanine blast through a door at the same time a Magnemite hacks through the computer system. That is some Siege nonsense, and I was here for it. Now, how I went on picking on the jobs I would talk about, I basically went to job sites to see which jobs were the most in demand in the United States in recent years. Uh, this seemed like the best way to pick jobs that wouldn't I wouldn't normally think of. It seemed like a more unbiased approach. And then I threw in some biased ones just in case. Then from there, we can look at the job and what it requires, why it's so important to have this job, and how that job translates to the Pokemon world. So let's start with the obvious one, which to me, when, when I saw this on the list of demanded jobs, like, yes, this is obvious, we have to talk about this, construction workers. If you're working construction, in our world, it is one of the most fundamental jobs anyone can have. It actually pays quite well. It's just back-breaking labor, literally. So if you do ever need a job and you want to do it for a limited time and not forever, construction work is usually a really good way to go. I know doctors who have actually worked construction to pay through medical school. In the Pokemon world, every time we see something getting built or moved around, it's usually done by Machokes and Machamps. And they seem like the perfect Pokemon to assist with the job. Now, a construction worker's new job, instead of being just the one who picks things up, you not only have to be fit to be able to pick and carry things, you also have to be good at giving clear instructions to Pokemon. You can't just let the Machokes carry things around and go have lunch for eight hours. You have to actively look at them and say, no, 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 go that way, go that way, stop, put it down lift this up here, lift it up a little bit more, you'd have to be a pretty competent Pokemon trainer to be able to convey complex measuring instructions to a Pokemon. But that also brings the question, uh, do you bring your own Machoke, or does the company provide it for you? Is a Machoke or a Machamp company property? It might be like the Battle Frontier, like, oh, you can rent this Pokemon. Or what if it's what if it's union-based? What if the unions actually have to compete to make sure that they can get better quality Machokes and Machamps or better trained Machokes and Machamps? There's so much you could go into on just how the intricacies of labor union versus the corporate control of the Pokemon would go to. Uh, would the Team Plasma be around for that? Like the PETA, the group. Man, I hate PETA. I hate Team Plasma for being PETA. I hate them both. Anywho, that goes for construction. And again, super important job. 
But with Pokemon, you not only have to be strong, you also have to be able to give really good instructions because one false move, that Machoke's going to be swinging around that great, and he's not going to know what to do with it. Next up, what I find to be one of the most important jobs on the planet, and has been one of the most important jobs on the planet for a super, super long time, uh, anything to do with healthcare. Anything to do with making sure people get better. People are going to get sick and die no matter what universe you're in. It's the sad truth of the reality we live in and the reality of almost any world that we go explore. With Pokemon, this makes things really more interesting because medical professionals now have more tools to help people out. There are Pokemon that can calm people down. Uh, Meganium has the ability to release a smell that can reduce hostility. If you've ever been in an emergency room, there's been some pretty high emotions going on in those areas. Uh, Pokemon can help you put to sleep, so if you need mild anesthesia, you don't need to be an anesthesiologist or a nurse anesthetist. Just have a hypno, put them to sleep, and then hold them down for a bit. Uh, there are Pokemon like a Dino that can read heartbeats and tell you how things are doing. And then there's the obvious Pokemon that can use Heal Pulse. The medical care in the Pokemon world would be amazing. And if it's anything like the Pokemon Centers, it'd probably be free. Pokemon would probably not be in charge of things like elective surgery, therapy, reproductive health, as these things really do require a human intelligence and a human perspective. Can you imagine being able to get, you're about to go and get your appendix removed, and before you go under by the hypnosis, hypnosis you just see a scyther with its hands just staring over you, and that's the last thing you see before you pass out. With therapy, you might have something like a litten or something small and cute that you can pet and hold on to, and that can be seen like a comfort thing. But you wouldn't have them directly involved in diagnosing any sort of anxiety or depression that you're working with. That's up to the humans. And reproductive health, people are already finicky on who knows about their personal body and especially their private areas. I really don't think adding a Pokemon is going to make that any easier. Uh, the next job I looked up is one you really take for granted. Everyone, including myself, has taken these jobs for granted, and that is truck drivers. If you live in the United States, thank you, truck drivers. A large part of everything that gets shipped around the United States is the truck drivers. Without truck drivers, you don't get anything. You don't get food. You don't get water. You don't get pretty much anything you require to live requires truck drivers in the United States. Yeah, so this being such an important job... Uh, in our world, a lot of people might not think how important it is in the Pokemon world. You might be thinking, well, why not just fly it? Just have your Pidgeot to fly it around. And believe it or not, you run into the exact same problem that you would have in our world just with Pokemon instead of planes. Flying stuff place to place costs more. Uh, given the amount of stuff you have to transport is limited by the size and weight limits of the aircraft slash Pokemon. You can't transport too much by plane because planes do have a very limited capacity on what they can hold. Yes, the people at Delta and American Airlines have a slight point when they charge you more for the extra baggage. They shouldn't be charging you that much, but they do it anyway. That's a whole thing I could get in a fight about. But you can't just fly things over. The easiest way to ship things is, well, by ship. But in the Pokemon world, you're still going to need people to drive around those trucks and hide news under them to make sure that Don's uncle can tell you about it later. You would still need people to go place to place and drive goods to the market. Now, in Gen 3, we saw that the Machokes were used for the moving process, and I wonder what other Pokemon could be used for a truck driver. You might just have a comfort Pokemon with you, someone to just keep you safe or someone to help be your buddy. You could have a Pokemon that knows any number of moves to make sure you stay awake. Honestly, the Pokemon that comes to my head first is a Growlithe. I think Growlithe would be a really fun Pokemon to have because if you're on those cold truck nights and you have just this warm little buddy cold up next to you, I feel that would really help with the trip. I think it would also be really cool to have a fighting type with you because truck driving is super strenuous on the body because you're just sitting there for so long. It's nice to have a fighting type that you can help exercise with. So this one, I didn't think it would be so topical when I recorded this, but with the harsh winter storms that are devastating the South, again, if anyone is able to listen in the South right now, my heart goes out to you. Please stay safe and stay warm. But you all realize now the importance of the electrical grid and why it needs to be monitored and maintained constantly. Now think of all the problems you've experienced with electricity in your life. Now imagine if there were electric animals living in your world that would either eat or attack the power grid. What do you do to deal with that? If you're an electrical engineer, you're going to have to find a way to avoid Pokemon eating your electricity and draining away power and draining away your money. 
you're also going to have to try and see if you're going to use Pokemon to generate that power, or if you're just going to use generators. That might be a problem where the Pokemon just can't generate that much power constantly. When lands went and busted up Team Rocket's little power operation, they were overusing the electrodes. So what I think would be a really good idea, if you were an electrical engineer, you'd probably be thinking, okay, no more hanging wires. We need to start burying our wires. Because if you think about it, that's the one place most electric types aren't going to be able to get it, is if you bury it underground. Now, I mean, you'll still have to super insulate and protect it because there are still burrowing Pokemon. But if you think about it this way, hanging electrical cords above the street, if there's an earthquake or something breaks, now you have a down power and the power lines to deal with. If something happens underground now, it's not going to get in your way and someone can go down and fix it. I would recommend that anybody who did become an electrical engineer and worked on the ground with making sure the grid was okay and repairing things, they probably should have uh, any Pokemon with Volt Absorb with them just to make sure they can draw away any excess electricity that might try and get them. It would just immediately go to the Pikachu or the Plusle to make sure that everything is okay with them. Might not get everything, but again, no. Now, these jobs that I mentioned are all pretty hands-on jobs. These are jobs that typically involve a lot of use with your hands, but let's use one that uses more of your brain. And what I think is probably the least Pokemon required of all the jobs. So that's financial advisor. Now, a financial advisor, a lot of people assume it has something to do with the stock markets, and it can. The job of someone who is a financial advisor is to tell you how to invest your money and create financial plans, be it long-term or short-term. So, example, in the real world, if you want to create a college fund for your kid, a financial advisor will help you plan out how you're going to budget your paychecks in order to save up and what accounts to open with your bank. If you wanted to invest in a certain company, and if you wanted to see if that was financially sound, the financial advisor would make sure that they could help you do that. In the Pokemon world, you probably wouldn't need a Pokemon for this, but how you would still need it. It would be an incredibly important job to have. Instead of saving up for a college fund, what if instead you had a future trainer account for your kid? Your kid might want to be a Pokemon trainer when he grows up, so when he's born, you go to a financial advisor, save up money, so that way he has enough money to invest in a bike, a backpack, and anything he'll need to go and move forward in going after becoming the very best like no one ever was. Do you invest in the company that's going to build a safari zone nearby? because the safari zone might attract people to your town and thus your other businesses. There's a lot of work that people don't realize goes into planning and building the economy. There's so much, well, financial planning that goes into it and financial advisors would still be very much needed. Also, consider market consultants. Little fun fact about myself, my plan B when it wasn't animal biology was going to be marketing. So I always loved this idea of taking a product and trying to make it as appealing to someone as possible. Let's take the Safari Zone from the last example. You build that Safari Zone. How are people going to know about it? So if this person was going to have a Pokemon, this is someone who definitely would have a Rotom phone. This is someone who would 100% have a Rotom phone tied to social media so they could be at the front and center of what's being viewed and shared by everybody in the region. Uh, your marketing would also have to account for Pokemon as well as people. If you're opening a restaurant, not only do you have to have a menu for people, you also have to show how it's a good experience for their Pokemon to try and draw people in. Since almost everyone seems to have a Pokemon, you're going to have to focus the menu items to be human-related and maybe have some Pokemon foods as well. You're going to have to market that to the surrounding areas and try and match the needs of the consumer versus what the actual client has. And trying to be creative about it is going to be really, really important. Keep that in mind, in the Pokemon world, anything that involves money and marketing is going to have to involve thinking about Pokemon as much as humans. In our world, we just have to worry about what humans think. We don't really care what the cat thinks about the cat food commercial. The cat food commercial is trying to target the humans to make you think the cat wants the cat food. Now, Pokemon world is going to be different. Your marketing is now going to have to be, okay, I'm dealing with a Meowth who's actually intelligent. Quick, make the bag extra shiny. That way, the Meowth will pause the TV and trick the trainer into trying to go and buy more Meowth cat food. Brilliant marketing strategy. Man, I should have gotten into that. Then again, we wouldn't have this podcast, so give and take. The next one might be a pretty broad category, but it's something that I've always wanted to experience more of, and that is artists. Music, painting, movies, and more. 
Art is what makes the world great. Art is what makes life worth living. Admiral Thrawn from Star Wars once said that when you understand a species' art, you understand that species. And that is 100% true in Star Wars and in reality. Granted, he used that to attack and slaughter people by studying their art and using their culture to better understand their battle strategies, but live and learn. Plenty of Pokemon are smart enough to make their own art. Uh, Smeargle can make his own art. There are plenty of Pokemon out there that can make music. There are plenty of Pokemon that can go out there and be part of the movie industry. So unlike when you get animals at the zoo to do it, you could actually train Pokemon to do art. You can train them to become artists, and they could actually be really, really good. Think about training a Smeargle to paint people. Think like you don't have any artistic talent, but your Smeargle does. You could teach it to paint and make money off that. Also, you might have to actually compete against other people's Smeargles. Like, there might actually be a bias between Pokemon-made art and human art. You might actually have the competition because they're more on equal footing. Movies we covered in an episode last year, Pokemon would still be involved in the movies, but not just on screen. Uh, the effects, if you wanted to have something blow up, you could just have some dynamite, or you could have the Voltorb you self-destruct and have that in the background. You're going to need Pokemon like Machokes and Machomps. They come up a lot when it comes to this stuff for crew, for carrying things around, for moving things around, uh, even actors. Let's say you're trying to make a buddy cop movie, but instead of it being a buddy buddy, the, one of the people is human, a human who just doesn't like working with Pokemon, and the other person is a Pokemon. Oh, crap, that's Detective Pikachu, isn't it? Well, speaking of Detective Pikachu, the coolest part of that movie wasn't Machokes and people moving around and being together. It wasn't the Mewtwo. It wasn't any of that. The coolest part of that movie was the Loud Drift. If you haven't seen it, slight spoiler, they go to an underground arena, and instead of having a speaker system, the DJs are just people... Going, yo, make some noise! And they have these trained loudrids who are just busting out this sick beat. I'll, I'll play a little bit of the beat right here for you. Isn't this sick? I love this song. I listen to this all the time and think, man, Pokemon made that. Not really, but wow, Pokemon made that. That's so cool. I would love to have Loudred be the DJs at my next party. Okay, so last, and not, never least, ever, journalists. Uh, the reason I brought this one up is because, um, well, one, Chris being cameraman Chris, I want to shout out my love to one of my fellow journalists, but also one of my friends who lives back home. She is a journalist and reporter for the local news. I asked her what Pokemon would make her life a little bit easier. Uh, for her, she actually brought up Ditto. With Ditto, it can help her blend in if she's going into areas that are hard to access. Now, if you think Dittos can't turn into human-like forms, I understand that thought, but keep this in mind. What if the Ditto could turn into a Pokemon that helps them blend in? The human can disguise themselves. We've seen in the Pokemon world, Team Rocket is never out of disguises. So disguise yourself to get in, but have the Ditto around to blend in. If you're going into a Team Rocket base, it's good to pretend you have a Ditto turned into an Ekans. If you're going into a power plant to investigate where exactly the power is coming from, having a Ditto turn into a, mag a Magnemite might be a pretty good idea. A journalist in the Pokemon world would still need to investigate crimes, investigate local news. You would just have to have that Pokemon with you to assist in helping get those stories out and helping get the information you need. And I think that's where I'll wrap it up for now. These are just some of the jobs I came up with. If you guys want me to talk more about random Pokemon jobs and what I think, go ahead and let me know. If you don't want to hear it ever again, don't ever bring it up, and I'll never bring it up again. But I really do love this idea. I love going into the world of Pokemon and just digging in a little bit deeper to think how a world like this would function. A world with monsters that could render the sky, but at the same time give you health care. I think that's such a wonderful concept to go into. And I really want to know, if you guys want to leave a review, tell me what job you would want in the Pokemon world. You can't be a trainer. Not everyone's going to be the all-star. Not everyone's going to be the Pokemon champion. But we all would have a life in the Pokemon world. And I really want to hear what your life would be and what your job would be and what your partner would be in that job. 
All right, guys, I want to thank you so much for listening. I hope you guys have a wonderful rest of your day or night. Thank you so much. Again, leave a review or a comment in your podcasting place of choice. It really helps with our algorithm, and I really appreciate you guys helping out with all of that. So, please, thank you so much. Have a wonderful rest of your day or night. Peace! Oh, guys, really quick, before I forget, I recently was part of a group episode with another Pokemon podcast called The Wonderful World of Pokemon. I could explain what it is, but I wanted to help them out because they're a newer podcast, so they gave me this lovely little promo. Here it is. Hello there, prospective students. My name is Professor Jacob, and I'd like to cordially invite you to my lecture series entitled Welcome to the World of Pokemon, where we'll discuss the Pokedex entries for every Pokemon in order. Trust me, it's more exciting than you think. It loves pancakes prepared with a secret Alolan recipe. It breathes fire of such great heat that it melts anything. My teaching assistant, Mr. Curtis, will fill you in on the specifics. Why, thank you, Professor. Yes, of course, each week we test our students' knowledge with a pop quiz. Yes, that is that is the correct answer. You guys both got a 75% on this quiz. Well, let's hear some testimonials from our faithful trainer in training, Corbin. Thanks, Professor. This class is great. We always get hands-on interactions with the Pokemon each week, and it never goes bad. Yo, you're gonna have to, you're gonna have to put that back up. No, Venus, put it back up. No, I think, look outside the window. Oh my God. Wow. Wow. Jesus. There he goes. Whoa. Aspiring trainers can listen to new lessons every Wednesday on their audio platform of choice. I hope to see you in class. Oh, I'm sorry. Corbin. I'm sorry. I I did not mean to. You are that not was an accident. Permitted. I thought that was a oh, oh my that god. Okay, Welcome to the world of Pokémon. It's making a mess. It's making okay, a mess. that's it. I'm sorry. I've had it from you. Too. This is a that was not I recorded this. this Look, that wasn't yes, my fault. This yes, wasn't my fault. Yeah, they're a fun bunch of guys. I highly recommend it if you want to listen to it, but I will let you know. uh, They do swear a lot more than we ever will do on this show. So for our younger listeners, I wouldn't recommend it. For anyone older who doesn't mind the swearing, go ahead and do it. Again, they're a really fun bunch of guys. I'm really glad I could be a part of their episode. If you want to listen to the episode I was a part of, listen up to their Sand Slash episode. That's the one where I got to be a part of it. Hopefully I can join up with them again. All right, have a wonderful rest of your day. Bye.